We're gonna do a review of the 300 gallon reef tank sitting right here behind me in this episode. What's up guys, welcome back to Real Reefing TV. I'm Cody Grates, helping you save time, money, and frustration in the real reefing hobby, sharing my experiences and knowledge. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. Hit that subscribe button. Now today we're gonna to be doing a review on this 300 gallon reef tank. This is my biggest reef tank that I've ever owned and by far one of my best pieces of uh, of work I might add to that as well. Now if you don't know anything about this tank, I've had this tank up and running for I think three years now and um, no, two or three. I don't know, I can't, <laughs> I can't remember exactly. Um, should go back and look at my credit card statement but see they're about two or three years now this tank has been running and I've got almost every bell and whistle I could possibly think of to have on it. I'm running Radions for the lights on the back. Uh, they're Gen 3 non-pros on the back, and then on the front, they're AI Vegas. Now, I have had a problem with one of the Vegas over here just recently, and if you're following me on Facebook, you would have seen that. I ordered a power supply for it, 25 bucks on Amazon, so it's on its way. So what else has recently been done? Well, in order to plan for this upcoming vacation that we have, um, we're going to be gone for an extended period of time, so I wanted to make sure everything was as cruise control as it could possibly be. So on this, I have a calcium reactor. Went ahead and replaced the tank on it. It's a 20-pound tank that'll last me for a long time and refilled up all the media on that. Also replaced the carbon on it, um, which I haven't done in, I don't know, six months. Like a long time, I haven't replaced the carbon on it. And wow, can I tell like already in the next day, this water is crystal clear. You guys saw that I got some new fish in this tank. So I wanna report on how they are doing. We have the convict tank. Now this guy is awesome, I love him. I wish that he would eat some of the prepared foods that I have for him. So he really just pecks at the rock all day long. He's been, about, he's been in the tank for about two weeks now and that's all he'll eat. I've thrown everything at him. I've thrown mice shrimp, I've thrown pellets, I've thrown flakes, I've thrown um, sheets of nori at him, red and green. I just, I can't get him to eat anything other than that. So if you got some great ideas on how I can get him to eat, throw it in the comments section below. I'd love to figure that out. The second thing is, is I've got the hogfish. He came from reefsforless.com as well as that convict tank that you saw. So he um, is eating like a pig, he's doing great. Um, no signs of anything on his fins or he's just doing great in the tank. Also have a mandarin in here as well and he's cruising around, it comes out mostly at like nighttime. You'll see him cruising around the rock work, picking off uh, little goodies. So he's doing great as well. So I picked up some straight fire from the local reef store. I took in some of the stuff that I had, like these big Monty caps and, and one rock that had a bunch of pallies on it and some mint samakura. I took that in, got $150 worth of credit, which blew my mind. It was way more than I thought I was gonna get for it. And then got like five really nice acros. Uh, I got like a pink Millie, red planet, I got a purple passion, and, um, and then like a couple of other no name, but like really, nice looking corals. Oh, candlelight stag, I think it was like a battle corals or something like that. So really nice corals in here um, that I just picked up. All of my color is doing great. All of my growth is like just blasting out. I think it's because of that calcium reactor. Everything is so stable in the tank that it is just cranking out. And after a few weeks, I've got purple coralline algae just dotting the front of this tank. I had to spend the last uh, 30 minutes scraping it off the glass while my my, uh, my, sh my sleeve is a little bit wet. So, you know, you know you ain't a real reefer unless your sleeve gets wet every once in a while. All right, now I have had some problems in the tank. So let me go over those with you. I've got some Aptasia popping up. I mean, well, I shouldn't say some, it's a lot. It's like all over the tank. Aptasia is everywhere in here. So for the Aptasia, I've been researching into the Aptasia eating nudibranchs or the Aptasia eating filefish. And I'm not sure which route I'm gonna go yet, so more to come on that. The other issue is I have these pallies in the tank. There's some like over in this area right here, some right here in the Zoa garden behind me, and they're just take over. These pallies are not cool. I mean, they're, they'll sting you. They, um, they just encroach and kill anything that they, they just take over the, the landscape and the real estate in the tank. And so I want it gone. I want it out of here. 
I don't want any more of that in the tank. So what I did was I went online and did a little bit of research, found that you can use hypodermic needles. Well, this is what they say anyways. <laughs> you pick up hypodermic needles like you're some type of uh, drug dealer or drug user or something. And then you take white vinegar and you inject that straight into the polyp. But I'm thinking you could also probably use hydrogen peroxide since hydrogen peroxide is also a disinfectant, meaning it will clean, it will kill organisms, but it's also used in reef tanks for killing algae and like used for, for that type of thing. I'm thinking you could probably also use vodka too, since that's a carbon dosing source as well. But if it's injected straight into the polyp, that would kind of like explode it from there. So I'm gonna experiment with a couple different things there and see what works with those. Obviously staying very safe and only doing a few at a time, making sure that there's carbon in the tank to to kind of clean up those organics as they go. So um, so I will report back to you guys with any news on that. If that works, I mean, wow, that will be like such a lifesaver for so many people that they get one pally and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so great. It's like every single time. By the way, if you guys have radions and you don't have a reef link, whoo, gotta have it. We'll see how that goes and if it works, That'll, that'll help out so many people because you get that one pally and you're just like, oh my gosh, it's so cool. And you think that for a while, but then over the sudden it just starts taking over. And you're like, oh man, I really wish I could have some other corals in my tank. Well, you can, there's a solution and um, you just have to inject it with a needle into it. So anyways, we'll move on. I've got bubble algae in the tank as well and it's getting in the weirs of the overflows back up in here. It's, it's getting into like the uh, it's getting into the grate, the, the, what is that thing? It's not a grate, it's like a filter, it's not a filter, it's a, a, a screen for the overflow. Anyways, it, it just, I've got bubble algae getting into everything, it's all over the rocks and everything like that too. So, I've got some emerald crabs in here doing some work. I think I might need to add a couple more to just kind of pick away at it and keep it going. Um, manual removal is just not really in the cards for me, at least right now and there's so much coral in this tank that it's underneath everything and, and down in there and it's just it's difficult to get to so i've got to rely on a cleaning crew to get that done for me all right so let's go down under the sand and see what we got going on down there with the refugium so down here we have the fuge it's a 20 gallon long tank and it's got calerpa in it one big piece of live rock in the middle it's running walt smith fiji mud in it and um, yeah, wow, it's I mean, it's like there's crazy life in here. We've got copepods, amphipods, mites, shrimp. We got um, all sorts of different microfauna. There's bristle worms down here, micro brittle stars. I used to have a couple fish in here, got rid of them. Actually, funny story about that. We're gonna keep it 100. I had a, <laughs> I had a six line that I had trapped from up here, brought him down here, and he would not eat for me. And I'm not just gonna throw food down there. Um, I hadn't gotten around to getting him an owner yet. Y'all gonna hate on me for this. He ended up dying down here, but circle of life, good thing that came from it was that my anemone got to eat. So I took him, scooped him up, threw him in there, threw him in the mouth of the anemone, and he nom nom nom. So it's all, it's all okay, I think. R.I.P. Except he killed a lot of fish, so really, it's not that bad. All right, anyways. Skimmer doing great, although I did have a malfunction recently where my uh, where my return pump after a feeding session, after a feed mode, didn't kick back on. Something to do with the wire, it just, I don't know, it didn't work right. So it didn't kick back on, then after three minutes my skimmer is supposed to kick on. And so then it ended up overflowing because the water level was up to here in the sump and then it was just like literally you ever seen like the little rascals where they put too much dish soap in the thing and all the suds come bubbling out that's pretty much how it was down here like this whole thing was and these suds aren't clean suds they're nasty dirty and they leave behind this scum so that was fun to clean up but anyways that's over with calcium reacted like i said has been filled back up i cleaned the auto top off reservoir out it had a bunch of calc, calc slurry in it so i got that cleaned out and over here we've got the dosing pump um everything's pretty much run dry in it uh to be honest with you so i need to get it back up and running but i'm not going to do that until we get back from vacation because you don't want to 
add something what if i put it and it's too high of a dose i won't be able to notice that with my eyeballs until i get back and then by that time it's too late it's overdosed on everything and everything is wiped out so don't make any big changes like dosing and things like that until you get back from vacation you can really keep an eye on your tank every single day see what the changes are until you have things stable with it let's talk about water changes on this tank i don't do them i haven't done a water change in uh like like over a year and the reason for that is honest quite honestly i had this thing set up for automatic water changes but the automatic water change system that i had going it was kind of noisy and so i just ditched it i figured you know what i've got a calcium reactor and i've got i'm dosing and i have a proper means of removing all of the nutrients the the excess nutrients so why do i need to just take water and replace it just for the sake of replacing water it's a strain on my RO unit and it costs money to replace that salt. So for me, the way that I have this tank set up, I don't do water changes. Now on the 10 gallon Nuvo on my nano tank, I do do water changes because that tank doesn't have a skimmer. It doesn't have a biopillar reactor. It does have a refugium. It doesn't have a calcium reactor. And so to replenish those nutrients and to replenish those trace elements and, and major elements even right now, it needs that. This tank doesn't need that. So I don't do water changes on this tank. I think it just adds to the instability. So I don't do it. So I love this tank. I think it's doing fantastic. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments section below and let me know what you think about this tank as well and how I have things running on it. You guys can check out some more videos right over here. And if you haven't done it already, hit that subscribe button right here. Ring that bell, smash the like button. I'll catch you in a few weeks, guys. Later.